Hello everyone, just a quick disclaimer before we get started. I don't claim that my builds are the best in the game, and I'm sure there are better ways to optimize some of them, but be aware that I do tend to get my builds at least endgame viable. This includes things like arbitration, steel path, idle on hunts, etc. Now that this is out of the way, these timestamps have been left here and in the description for your convenience. Feel free to skip around, but I'll start with the basics first just in case people don't know how to play this frame. Alright, so let's start with comparing the Prime with the non-Prime. So Prime has 475 armor, and the non-Prime has 450. Atlas has super high armor as it is, so the 25 armor point difference between the two is pretty negligible. You're looking at about a 1% damage reduction difference between the two. Prime being at 61.3% damage reduction, regular being just 60. Atlas has a decent energy pool, looking at 150 for non-Prime, and the Prime has 175, so that's a 25 point difference. It's a pretty good bonus, so the Prime will be at a total of 262, while the non-Prime is at 225. Alright, so looking at the health, that that's a big difference. That 75 point difference actually really makes them stand apart at max rank. So at max rank, the Prime is going to have 525 health, and the non-Prime is going to have 300 health. So when you account for Vitality, that's a pretty big loss. In terms of shield, non-prime has a base of 100, prime has 150. It's a pretty big difference, but this doesn't really matter to Atlas much regardless. Now, usually I don't care about sprint speed, but Atlas is real slow, the regular Atlas. Like his bullet jump and stuff is, is still fine, but he has a really slow sprint speed. Prime is at a stock speed, whereas non-prime is at 0.90, which isn't great. So if you had to choose, the total effective health is much higher on the prime, as well as the energy. So it's definitely worth going right for the Prime, but let's think about a year down the line, right? When Atlas has been vaulted for some time, because he's about to get vaulted, he's going to be worth a lot more, so you may not find that it's worth it. The boss fight for regular Atlas isn't that hard, assuming you have a decent Arch Gun. But if you're just looking to maximize all your stats, just buy the Prime. Alright, so moving on to abilities and passives. So Atlas is actually immune to knockdown while he's on the ground. So if his feet are on the ground, he will not be knocked down. Alright, so the landslide ability is his first ability. And bash enemies with an explosive sliding punch and repeat for a devastating combo. And then it goes on to mention some stuff uh, about other abilities, which we'll get into soon because they synergize together. But for now, we're going to go over what the ability actually does. So basically, it's three different attacks in one. So you have the first one, the second one, and a third one. And if you notice, that third one just made everybody go flying. So the third hit in a combo chain makes an explosive punch and it just knocks everything back within a radius so you may have noticed when i was performing the combo chain there's a bar in the bottom there the two times four times and then it just stays at four times so the two and four times is actually a damage multiplier as long as you're hitting things you're keeping a high damage multiplier and the that window is basically all you have to worry about as long as that timer isn't all the way down you'll always keep that damage additionally it takes 25 energy base to cast, right? But if you have that combo going, so at two times, you'll have a 50% energy reduction on your next cast. If you have it at four times, any next cast will be at 75% energy reduction. So you can actually spam this pretty frequently and it won't take, you know, the 25 energy every time. So everything after your third hit in that combo multiplier will always take 75% less energy and that's super important because this is a very spammy ability. All right, a couple of other things worth mentioning before we move on to the next ability is he is invulnerable while casting his one as you can see in the top right. Another thing worth mentioning is his melee combo counter works for landslide and melee mods work for landslide. So. He is a very melee focused fighter. Alright, moving on to his second ability, Tectonic. Summon a Bulwark Rock Wall. Activate again to send the rocks crashing towards the enemy. Bulwarks attacked by enemies release an area of effect slash powered by the health that is lost. Alright, so his Bulwark is basically a deployable wall. And. Enemies can't shoot through this, they can't walk through it, and it can be recast to roll. So, it'll roll in the direction that you recast. It'll try to go to wherever your cursor is. So, if I'm looking this way, 
And I recast it. That rock is going to go as close as it can to the cursor. It does have a limited range, but it is what it is. Another thing to note is, upon summoning, the bulwark is invulnerable for a short duration. And it converts all that damage into extra health within that time. And as you can see in the bottom right, that number is actually the percent of health it has left. As you can see, now it's slashing some enemies. And then it breaks, just like that. Get rid of these guys. So the health of the ability is affected by strength and armor mods. The Bulwark also has another mechanic, which I'll be going into shortly after I go over Rumbler. So Petrify. Atlas's hardened gaze will fossilize foes, heal Rumblers, and create Petrified Bulwarks. When shattered, Petrified enemies drop Healing Rebel for Atlas. Now, this Healing Rebel does one of two things. It either heals Atlas if he's missing any health, or if he's not missing any health, it actually gives him armor to a gauge he has above the weapon you see down there. So if I petrify this enemy, I shoot him in the head, he dropped rubble. And that rubble gave me 50 armor, as you can see down there, and it's slowly draining. So it drains over time, but that can stack up to 1,500 extra armor, and that is a lot. A couple of other things to note is the field of view is locked at 60 degrees, but the range is affected by range mods, and of course the duration is affected by duration mods. Additionally, petrified enemies take 50% more damage, seemingly from all sources. Okay, moving on to rumblers. So I will explain more of petrified synergies later, but for now, move on to rumblers. Summon two elemental stone brawlers to the melee, summoning petrified enemies in close proximity to Atlas. When finished, Rumblers collapse into a pile of healing rubble. Or alternatively, if you just click four again, they they die and it drops to pieces of rubble. Rumbler health is affected by health, shield, and strength mods on Atlas. Rumbler armor is affected by armor mods on Atlas. Rumbler damage is affected by strength mods on Atlas. Rumbler explosion and stone radius is affected by range mods on Atlas. Speed is affected by range mods on Atlas as well. So in my honest opinion, these really aren't worth using, and I'll demonstrate why real quick. So these are level 60s, okay? And as you can see, it demonstrated that those guys are doing 50% extra damage. They're both attacking one guy, you know, level 60s. So this will do damage, you know, on like... It, it'll probably do damage at level 60 if you got mods and stuff on it. But let's think Steel Path really quick. These guys don't do so hot against armor. Steel Path has a lot of armor. The most these guys are going to be doing for you is being retarded, first of all. Not doing what they're supposed to be doing. And they're just going to take hits for you, basically. They're not really going to really provide much to you. I mean, they'll die and then they'll be like, oh, here's 100 rubble for picking up, you know, their drops. But what's stopping me from just petrifying a bunch of enemies and then killing them, and then picking up all that rubble, like, we really don't have a reason to use rumblers, like, it's okay, I think as an ultimate, it sucks really bad, but, <sighs> he really doesn't need a distraction, to be completely honest, it's just not an ability you're really gonna need to hit. All that being said, let's move on to the ability synergy, so, for whatever reason you're using rumblers, Say they start taking some damage, you can actually petrify them to heal them. Uh, probably not something you're really gonna need to do, but it's an option if you need it. Additionally, if you petrify a bulwark, it will roll 200% faster, do 200% more damage, and it also goes quite a bit further. So let's send that out. As you can see, that was much quicker. Additionally, Petrified Enemies Killed with Landslide actually give 75 health or armor instead of the normal 50 that you would get. Let's see if I can demonstrate this without killing everybody. As you can see, that was 75 instead of the normal 50 that you would get for just killing them with something else. And that is pretty much all of his abilities and mechanics in a nutshell. Okay, moving on to augments. So for the first one, we have a Landslide Augment. Leave a trail for 12 seconds that petrifies enemies for 6 seconds. So, 
This is actually a pretty good one because it can... It's basically a free petrify. So if I just go through here, notice how enemies get affected by it if I kind of run through them. And sometimes even right where I hit them, it, it gets them affected. It's not the most consistent for some reason. I don't know what it is. There hasn't been like any real report of mechanics. You can't see the trail on the ground and it doesn't always work for some reason. I don't know why it doesn't say it's a chance. I do know that in an actual mission, it's a lot more consistent than in testing here, and it's actually not that bad of an augment. But basically, it, say you charge through a hallway, right? And you're just landsliding everything through that hallway. Typically, any enemy that's following behind you is going to, you know, kind of just go through that hallway, and then they're going to get frozen. It's actually a lot more consistent in an actual mission. I don't know why it's not consistent here. Like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why, but in a mission, it definitely is consistent. So this means basically that if you're playing properly, you can pretty much keep things petrified until you can get back to them, which means you don't actually have to use petrify. And that can save a ton of energy because petrify isn't exactly the most cheap ability to use. So this augment actually isn't too bad. Okay, moving on to the next augment, Rubble Heap. Passive augment. When above 1400 rubble, landslide costs no energy, deals two times damage, and travels two times faster. This is really good for landslide. If you can keep that rubble up properly, that's actually really solid. So if I'm at 1400 rubble, which I'll demonstrate in a second. All right, so I'm above 1400 armor now, right? And I'm pressing one, and it's not taking any energy. That is actually incredibly good. And if you noticed, it was very snappy going between those enemies. That was, whew, that was pretty quick. That is fairly solid augment. And I would say it's even worth using as well as the other one. Okay, moving on to his second ability augment, Tectonic Fracture, Tectonic's Augment. Create up to three walls with 100% health. Walls can no longer be turned into boulders. Now, this is a pretty niche ability. This ability is really isn't used all that much anyway, but like if you really wanted to, like you could surround a defense target or something. It's it's really not something you need to do. This is pretty silly, not gonna lie. It's just not something you would need to do. It's a thing. That's about all it is. There's not much else to say. Okay, moving on to Orge's Augment. So, Petrify Augment. Petrified enemies are scanned into the Codex and have a 25% chance to drop additional loot when killed. Now, this actually isn't too bad. Okay, so just as an example uh, to demonstrate, so the Orge's drop chance is actually affected by strength. So, because it increases your chance, if you double your strength, you double your chance. So... How this works is you orgaze a bunch of enemies, or you, well, petrify, which in turn does orgaze, and then if you kill them, you notice that's quite a bit of energy orbs. It's quite a bit of, quite a bit of ammo, quite a bit of health even. So if you're in an actual mission, those are actually going to have resources as well. Because I'm in the simulacrum, it's not actually going to be showing those resources, but it does a pretty good job at giving extra drops. So it's not a bad augment. And this is his helmet ability. So it is kind of better on other farming frames than it is him because just the way his kit works. Unfortunately, it's not bad. It's just, it's kind of hard to find good uses for this. Okay, moving on to a rumbler augment. Titanic rumbler. Create a single rumbler with 300% health and 300% damage reactivating will cause him to slam the floor and knock down enemies in 15 meters. So basically, if I bring these guys back up to level 60, if you remember earlier when I was, you know, I had these guys going after him. Let's see how much damage he does now. He's a lot bigger too. Yeah, that's, that's about right. It still doesn't do a whole lot. 
But now we have an alternate strike. So now instead, if we hold four, instead of it just demolishing him, it actually does a stun. And that stun is pretty good. It also has a cooldown on the top right that you can see. Uh, in my opinion, I really don't see why you would use this for a stun when you have this. I mean, really? I... I... I, I okay. This is a really dumb augment. There's pretty much already no reason to go for rumblers. This doesn't change that fact at all. And now we're on to the last augment. Rumbled. Rumbler's augment. Atlas becomes a rumbler with rock armor that can absorb up to 300% of max health worth of damage. This, he's so tanky to begin with. This is just so unnecessary. This gives you more reason to roleplay in this game than it does to actually play the game. There is no reason to use this augment. It's so bad. It it really does nothing. I mean, I I can't I I can't even bullet jump. I can only roll, I can't slide, I I can't even jump. This augment sucks. There is no reason to do this. This is, however, a conclave augment. And I am going very slow back to the arsenal because this is as fast as I can't get back up. Oh my god, this is... Alright, look, this is a conclave augment. So, justifiably, this would only ever be used in conclave to be a bit more tanky. Don't use it in PvE. If you're using it in conclave, fine. But I'm not a conclave kind of person, so I can't even tell you if it's worth using in there. At this point in the video, I like to answer the question, is this frame steel path viable? Can it run arbitrations? Is it part of the Eidolon hunts? That's a big fat no to the Eidolon hunts. However, he is very much steel path viable, and I haven't really got into an actual build yet, but you will see very shortly that he is very freaking strong. He is insane with his landslide. He is incredibly tanky. I've dealt you know 40 plus million damage with his landslide before it's absolutely insane what he's capable of i wouldn't say he's that great for most missions but things like you know survivals and and maybe defenses i don't know things where you just want to kill everything he's incredibly good i wouldn't bring him into like an interception but he's definitely able to run stuff so that's a big yes on arbitrations and an even bigger yes on Steel Path. Okay, so for the first and only build that we're going to be doing today, we have a landslide build. Pretty much the only thing you're ever going to need. Basically what we're going to do is we're just going to be super tanky and press 1 on everything to death. In terms of helmet, it's totally optional with this build, but I would recommend replacing his 4 as his rumblers are really, really bad. I would do either Roar or Eclipse. Eclipse is another really good one. It gives you a lot more. It's just you may not always have the buff up. It may be the evasion rather than the damage. If you know how Eclipse works, you know what I'm talking about. In terms of Formas, you only need one for this build, and you can put it wherever the hell you want. If you have other builds for him that you would like to you know, be more compatible with, do whatever you need to do for that. Okay, going over the mod choice. We are starting with Steel Charge. It's an obvious choice. He has a Matarai polarity by default. It just works out. This melee weapon does, in fact, increase your landslide damage. First mod we have in there is Umbral Vitality and Umbral Intensify. So the reason why we're doing this is so we can buff our health a bunch and our strength. This is pretty much going to be our only source of strength next to Rubble Heap, which will actually allow us to do twice as much damage with landslide as long as we are above 1400 rubble it will cost no energy which means we don't need a whole bunch of efficiency and it travels fast so we're hitting our landslides super super quick we also have prime flow so we can bank a ton of energy adaptation so we can just take more hits stretch so we can hit farther with landslide prime continuity so our petrify lasts longer as well as our roar or eclipse if you're using helmet we're also using path of statues which Continuity does help. This will leave a trail for 12 seconds of petrifies enemies for 6 seconds. This means we won't have to spam petrify as much. 
The reason why we don't run Umbral Fiber is because of diminishing returns. We're better off optimizing our other stats and using augments. With an armor of 475 plus about 1400 from Rebel means we are getting 86.2% damage reduction. With an armor of 1389 plus around 1400 from Rebel means we are getting 90.2% damage reduction. Once you start getting into the super high armor values, you just get massive diminishing returns. If you're interested in the math behind the damage reduction formula, here it is. In terms of arcanes, I would say Fury is definitely a huge necessary if you want to be doing extra melee damage. Alternatively, you could be using Arachne, which is pretty good as well. It just buffs everything, assuming you wall latch occasionally. It's a little niche, but it works. Uh, as a second arcane, you can either roll more damage or you can do energize if you don't feel comfortable with this setup. It does take a little bit of practice. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, you do need a melee to increase his damage. And this is the build I recommend. You can use whatever weapon you want as long as it's running these mods. If you're having a hard time keeping your combo multiplier up, I would recommend running Drifting Contact in place of Gladiator Might. You do lose quite a bit of damage, but it, you're already going to be one-shotting anything, everything regardless. So it's pretty much whatever at that point. You're going to want to run Nariman for the Operator School because you have a Power Spike buff, which melee combo counter now decays while out of combat by 5 every few seconds instead of depleting completely. This is really good. You don't particularly need Zenuric on this build because your landslide becomes free pretty much all the time. There's no reason not to be able to get it for free with the augment. Now I'm just going to show you quickly how to use this build. We're going to be going against 185 Corrupted Heavy Gunners. Basically what you're going to do, I'm using Roar by the way instead of Eclipse because Eclipse does not actually work in here because I need to be here and the lighting isn't good enough. So basically what you want to do is you want to buff up and you want to petrify everything at the start when you get in and then you just want to get your common multiplier up okay so my multiplier is at max and as you can see those guys spawned in and they were already set to stone which means technically i don't have to use a petrify right away i am going to just keep them in place but as you can see this build is quite a bit of damage that is pretty impressive. And obviously I'm not having any issues with energy because I am always above 1400 rubble. But I would say that does pretty good damage. I'm going to go into an actual mission and show you guys what it is capable of. So personally right when I get in and maybe a steel path mission is I shield up. And when I get enough energy to cast a Petrify, I'll kill all those enemies with my weapon. And then I'll go and collect that. I'll Petrify as much as I can. Until I'm at that armor point where I can, you know, not waste a ton of energy using landslides. So I'm at that 1400 armor. I can just start landsliding away. So I'm going to skip ahead a little bit to an Acolyte spawn. As you can see, I'm just swinging away at everything. I spot him upstairs, so I go up. And he's, yeah, he's gone. So I've just been alternating in this room back and forth, back and forth. And as you can see, they're forced to come to me. So they're all frozen. I haven't really used Petrify this entire mission. And here's another. He didn't last long. But see, now I come back and they're still frozen. I'm barely using, I think I've used Petrify like twice this entire mission after spawn. Like... I just, I did not need to use it. And that's pretty much the build. I mean, there's really not much else to it. You just, you're super tanky. You one-shot everything. Like, this is Steel Path. Everything is dying. So yeah, I would say Atlas is pretty good. Definitely recommend him if you just need to punch everything to death. If you enjoyed the video or it helped you in any way, please leave a like, and if you're looking forward to future content like this, subscribe and stay tuned. If I missed anything or you'd like to leave some feedback, leave it down in the comments. I appreciate all the support, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.